This is Testudo Hermani, Hermani habitat, uh, not far from Girona um, in northern Spain. It's really quite different, in fact, a totally different habitat than we would find uh, Testudo Guica, Guica in. Um, much more densely vegetated. There is a lot of uh, Quercus ilex, which is one of the Mediterranean oaks, deciduous trees. Um, the rainfall here, the annual rainfall, is substantially uh, greater than you get, say, in Almeria, where Guica is found. Um, it, there's a great profusion of wild flowers at the moment. This is the sort of peak season, of course, for tortoise activity. Uh, April, May, uh, very active. June, they're active here. The um, cycles of activity are, can also vary a lot, obviously, according to climate. And here, the summers are not so hot and dry, but the winters are very much colder. So you know, these tortoises adapt to these different environments. And uh, Hamani uh, is much more tolerant of um, extended periods of wet, for example. The diet is slightly different. Uh, although they are predominantly herbivorous, they will also eat snails and things like that sometimes. Whereas with Guica Guica, we don't really find them eating anything uh, live, um, food at all or, or carrion. But here, uh, the Hermani are definitely more um, in that direction. And they, not to a great extent, but they will eat slugs, they will eat snails. So the diet is slightly different, the environment is different, many of their behaviors are different. And so, you know, they are a completely different species uh, with uh, different adaptations to these environments that they originated. And this species, of course, um, goes from here uh, into southern France, uh, the Massif de Mores, that area uh, where Soptom is based. And then again, you can find them going through Italy uh, and that area. After that, it changes to uh, Hermani uh, boat Gerai, the uh, eastern race. But the, the western race, which is here, is really critically endangered through habitat loss. Same old problems that we have everywhere with tortoise populations all over the world. Road building, destruction of habitat for agriculture, uh, introduced pests, and things like that. And also development, you know, so-called development for houses, factories, and all this sort of stuff. So all of these things can have a big impact upon these populations. One of the things that's very important to Testudo Hermani is that there's some open areas as well as forested areas because for nesting purposes, for example, they like certain areas that are a bit more open. So you get better incubation temperatures, and they can thermoregulate. So they needs a balance really between forested areas and open areas. So when they're actually trying to manage areas for tortoise conservation, it's very important that you strike that balance between uh, original uh, deeper forest and some open areas because those both are absolutely critical. And tortoises are often found on the edges, the periphery area, boundaries between forest and more open areas. So all of these are equally critical uh, to maintain the successful reproduction of a population. One of the common problems that we've mentioned many times in connection with uh, tortoises and tortoise habitats is intensive agriculture here, um, vines planted, and this would have been um, a habitat area, but has now been uh, ploughed up to uh, promote the growth of uh, vineyards. So, um, yeah, as always, uh, agriculture is a huge threat and destroys massive amounts of uh, pristine tortoise habitat. Most of the uh, dried leaves that you can see here are from the Quercus, the uh, Mediterranean oak. If we look at this substrate here, as we mentioned previously, there's a great number of uh, oak leaves and 
quite a thick layer actually of uh, dead vegetation so um, it's uh, really uh, almost like a composty type uh, substrate in this particular location um, and it's uh, really quite dry if you go dig down a little bit you can feel a little bit more moisture there but towards the surface it's um, definitely very dry we're going to take some measurements of this in a second so we can see exactly what's going on but this is a very interesting um, substrate to be finding tortoises on and is quite typical of uh, the types of substrate that you will find Testudo humani on uh, we carry a uh, proper uh, tortoise environmental toolbox with us and uh, that has a lot of instruments in there from uh, UV index meters, UV level meters, hygrometers to check uh, relative humidity. We've also got various forms of temperature sensor and uh, a whole set of different data loggers. In fact, even some um, uh, infrared cameras, uh, thermography cameras. And another very simple uh, instrument that we sometimes use can be very informative is to a soil um, analysis devices and um, this one is a soil temperature and soil humidity meter so it gives us an idea whether the uh, substrate underneath the surface is slightly moist or if it's very dry so we're just going to pop this into the ground here and we're going to take a reading in this uh, habitat and see what it comes back with so we've got a reading from that now and we were getting soil temperatures of 24 degrees Celsius at about 50 millimetres down, which is about the maximum depth that the tortoises tend to go to, down to here. But the soil moisture is still reading as very dry. Uh, although this looks um, quite like a thick carpet of mulch, it's not very deep just a little bit below that um, it's very stony and rocky so although it retains a little bit more moisture than say a totally rocky area not very much so it's by no means is this a, a humid uh, microclimate um, once you get uh, 50 millimeters or so it's it's slightly less dry slightly less arid than uh, the rocky areas where you can't even get a reading at all um, but it still reads as very very dry um, with a, uh, a soil uh, humidity probe so that's useful to know but um, you could create these um, uh, little um, substrates I think quite easily um, you, and, and really it's a combination of um, oak leaves and other dead vegetation just forming this uh, mat like surface and um, it's uh, certainly a, a different environment from that that we tend to find uh, Testudo glycron which of course is much more barren and very very sandy. Another reading from the natural environment here that uh, can be very useful to know is that I've just taken a uh, UV index in uh, full sun and we were getting uh, UV I of 4 precisely. Um, if we move down however and we take a reading in the shady areas uh, that drops to 1.2. So again a very big difference in UV index between in the open and in the shade. Um, so People do often think, of course, that tortoises are out at the peak times of UV index. That's very rarely true because mostly they're active fairly early in the morning when the sun um, is low on the horizon. So the UV index is not that great. And by the time the UV index has attained its peak levels, so too have temperatures, particularly surface substrate temperatures. So they can be, as we've just seen, uh, over 50 degrees, 60 degrees Celsius even. And that is too hot for the tortoises. So they, they're not going to be out in that. They will retreat um, and they'll be in shade or they will have buried down. So they're not getting these peak, uh, very, very high UVI levels. Uh, hardly ever. It's nearly always early in the morning. And as the UV index climbs, so does the temperature and that prompts them to retreat into shade or shelter. 
the various oak trees that you find here, including varieties of cork oak and Quercus ilex, uh, other species, provide a, a really great degree of cover and shade. And that shade uh, is very important to encourage shade-loving plants to proliferate. One of the really interesting things about Testudia humani is that they spend quite a lot of time obviously in full sun, but also a lot of time in some really quite shady areas under the Mediterranean oak trees and also this other scrubby vegetation around. So they're getting a very big difference in light levels when they do that. Now I have just measured the light levels in full sun and we're getting 129,000 lux, which is very bright. In fact, the lowest sort of levels are recorded um, in this uh, scrubby vegetation in shade under the oak trees is only around 6,000 lux or so, which is a really massive difference from what they're being exposed to uh, when they're in full sunlight. Also, obviously, the surface temperatures are much cooler there. We're just going to measure that now and have a look. So we're going to do a quick comparison between the surface temperatures in full sun and the surface temperatures in shade. And that will give us, again, some interesting dynamics on the types of thermal environment in which they operate. So we've got a uh, non-contact infrared thermometer. And we're going to check the substrate temperature here um, in full sun at around 1 p.m. So that should give us an idea of what this is looking like. So I'm checking this now. Yep, and we're getting a really quite high temperature on there. It's uh, 64 degrees Celsius, which is really, really hot. Now, if I go over and do the same thing, but we check that in a shaded area that they would retreat to when it gets to these temperatures, because, because these temperatures are actually so high that they can have problems with overheating. So if uh, we go and check the temperatures under shade, uh, we'll get a completely different reading. And I'm going to just wander over here to a different shaded area and back in a second and we'll look at those temperatures. We moved over to a spot that has typical substrate, a lot of oak leaves and other thorny vegetation. And we're going to take a reading now of the surface substrate temperature in shade. And we're getting only 21 degrees Celsius. That's a massive difference from the substrate surface temperatures in full sun. So tortoises will make use of this because when it gets too hot by midday or mid-afternoon, um, they will retreat into these cooler areas uh, to wait sometimes until later in the day when they may emerge again for a second period of activity late afternoon or early evening. But they've got a tremendous range of um, different temperatures available to them. And, uh, in the natural habitats, they make use of all of these different microclimates, all of the things such as rocks that they could angle against if they're trying to get warm fairly quickly. So they have a tremendous choice of thermal environments. And if we look at what often happens in captivity, um, the range of thermal environments they have is very, very, very much more limited. So I think that that uh, definitely is uh, something for people to consider there. Just look at the range of thermal environments they have here. I hope you found this uh, brief introduction to some of the habitats and microclimates of uh, Testudo homani homani here in Catalonia in northern Spain. Interesting. Uh, we've also seen Moremis leprosa, uh, swimming wild, which is nice, in some really quite good habitat. So this has been uh, a long, long time since I was here last, um, but it's good to see that some of this uh, really unique uh, biotype still does exist, and that in a few areas there are still some reasonably healthy populations of tortoises. But as always, they face threats from agriculture, roads and so on, all the usual things that cause problems. But uh, they are still here and efforts are being made, uh, including by the Tortoise Centre, to 
uh, educate people about the importance of habitat conservation, not disturbing the tortoises in the world, illegally taking tortoises and so on. So uh, the work of public education continues and is vital. And they're also restocking the uh, wild populations with some captive bred animals, which will also help to reinforce the viability of those populations. So it's been a fantastic trip. Um, really um, enjoyed being here and learning a lot about Testudo hermani hermani. And uh, we hope that the small amount of that that we've been able to share with you is of interest and indeed of help. So thank you very much and uh, we'll be back to our normal schedule with Testudo Grica Grica um, fairly soon. Thanks for watching.